Hi, I'm Dom from the Semper Group and welcome to the OptiCline webinar on how to use Tolaris. Tolaris is the successor to TO3, an older version of the measuring software which is used with the OptiCline. I'm going to take you through how to start a new part. So I've already loaded the part into the machine and now I'm just going to go through the wizard which will guide me on how to start that part. So I just click the use wizard Make sure that it's in millimetres or inches, depending on my drawing. Click Next and choose to take the contour from the machine. This is going to take a scan of the part in the machine at the orientation it's loaded. This will help us to put a lot of features on by showing the contour. The contour is very similar to TO3. It looks extremely similar, it's just the way it's cut, instead of using a box, it now just uses two vertical lines. So I've cut the contour, I'm adding a general length position. This is like a start point of where the part is in the machine. And I've got also a valley angular position. This is a start point for how the part is rotationally positioned in the machine. Now I'm going to press finish. And I've got my program there, ready to go. I can add any feature I like. Now I'm going to add a complex feature, and the software is going to guide me through making the references to make it quick and easy. So I want to find the intersection point of these two angles, and then find the diameter where they meet. So I'm going to click on the diameter because that ultimately that's what the drawing says. I'm going to go point of intersection reference and then it's asking me to create my references. I already know that I want angles and the arrow up here tells me to choose that. So I can choose the angle, select the first position of that angle and then finish. And then it's asking me to choose the second <laughs> reference. Same again, the arrow is popped up at the top. I know that it wants an angle, and I'm going to choose that one. So it's guided me through those references. It's asking me to choose the position of that flag once I've made it. And I can just type in what I think the value will be. Or I can go into live mode, find out if it's measuring the correct feature, and then we can check if I'm doing everything correct. So 19.63, I can click on my detail contour, I already see that I've intersected my angles, I look like I'm getting the right measurement, so I'm happy with that. Okay, now I'm going to take a total radial run out, which is asked for on the drawing, and the machine's going to hold my hands the way through that process. So I want to take a total radial run out, and the drawing said just to take it on this surface, so I'm just dragging a box there. It's saying choose a reference of a part axis, so I can create a new reference. And for that axis, I need two roundnesses. It's already asked for the roundness there. I know one's at this end of the part. I can press finish there. And I know that the other one is at this end of the part. And that's going to tie up the total run out to this axis of the part. And then I can press finish. And the machine's going to go and measure that for me and show me if that's the correct way to measure it. And this gives me some understanding of the process so that I understand that the measurement's being taken correctly. I can look at the detailed contour and we should see that appear any second. Okay, it looks like it's being taken correctly. So you can see some of the deviations there, and you can see how it deviates as it goes round. There's a bit of dirt on the part, but that's okay. We're well within our tolerance. Okay, now I'm going to show you how some measurements are as simple as one click away, and some menu items are much easier to find than they used to be in Turbo Optic. So for some things, like a total axial, uh, an axial run out, for example, uh, I can just click on the surface and press finish, and it's going to go and measure that. And it's the same with maybe a concentricity as well. So I just click on the machine, click measure that feature, and then click on my reference, and I'm done. 
and you can see it's already measured. Now I'm just going to finish live mode and in the test plan header there's a lot of menu options that we usually use. So exporting PDFs of reports, we can just click one button and that will automatically go to our default export directory and the same with the CSV. So for SBC or data collection it's just one click away it's just immediately on there instead of having to navigate any, men any menus to find it. Okay, another way that we can save ourselves lots of time is by generating all the test characteristics automatically. The machine can actually search for shoulders, diameters and angles and create all of them and all we have to do is type in nominals and tolerances once they've been found. So this can help with more complex features too. So all I have to do is click on the test plan, create test characteristics and press OK. And you can see we've found lots of positions, diameters and a few angles on there too. The machine's just going to measure these and it should find all of these edges and then we can tailor our tolerances as required. So it's found them all and I can add other features on if I need to so it would be much easier to add a length now because I've already got positions to choose from and that's already measured.